you want to buy high quality stock when it's cheap. Uh, when the market has given up on it, has sold it off hard, that's when you want to buy if you're really positive on the long-term potential of the company. That's exactly what Applied Management did. They bought their own stock here during the bear market when the stock was ridiculously cheap. Hey everyone, welcome back to Chipstock Investor. There's a ton of good stuff happening over at Applied Materials, but everything AI has buried it. And we're going to catch you, the dear viewers, up to speed with useful investor information regarding Applied Materials. Nick, I see you're wearing your Flamingo shirt. Flamingo Friday it's, is back. It's Friday. Let's try to hasten the onset of summer here. Well said. Okay. Yeah. We are longtime shareholders of applied material stock. I think going on year seven, year eight, who's counting? This company just keeps on delivering the good stuff though. It was one of our top picks in late 2022. Most of 2023 was a top pick. We put it on hold as far as adding to our position any further at the tail end of 2023. That, of course, hasn't kept the stock from continuing to rally higher in 2024, up over well over 30%, approaching 40% year to date. I'd say that's pretty decent. It's been one of our top performing positions since we've owned it, especially when you factor in the dividend payments and the rising dividend payments along the way. That's what we want to talk about a bit here. The company's potential for shareholder returns, because there were some noteworthy news items that probably got overlooked the last couple of months. This chart from semi.org indicates that industry estimates are pointing towards new record highs for wafer, fab, and chip packaging equipment sales in 2025 and maybe well into 2026 too. This chart breaks the process up into three different segments, assembly and packaging, test equipment, and wafer fab equipment. And our industry flowchart showing exactly where wafer fab and packaging and assembly equipment all fit into the semiconductor industry, very centrally located. It's a very important choke point in the industry. And no matter the chip making process step or chip type, there's a high likelihood that applied materials has a piece of equipment addressing some part of the engineering, physics, or chemistry problem. Now, we zoom in a little bit more here and taking a look at applied materials revenue for the last two years, you can see that showed here on this chart in 2022 and fiscal year 2023, which just finished up. And then the initial outlook for fiscal 2024, which actually ends in October of this year, roughly in the middle of this chart, you can see revenue actually pretty sluggish, close to 0% these last few years, that doesn't sound so great. But bear in mind, we'll show you our little table that we've been showing off our last few videos. Remember, when you exclude AI infrastructure from the equation here, consumer, electronics, even cloud, excluding the AI system, or revenue that NVIDIA is gobbling up, and then especially auto industrial here in the last six months, We've been in a bear market. So applied materials performance, it's basically flat revenue. The last couple of years has actually been out performance relative to its peers. They were able to pivot to high growth industrial and automotive chip making equipment last year. Then this year, it looks like they're pivoting back to the high tech memory and logic chips needed for things like AI and high end cloud computing technology. And so they've been able to bridge not one, two potential gaps in revenue growth. So we're now looking at the next spate of growth coming for this company, coming from leading edge memory and logic. And then potentially by the second half of calendar year 2024, the next leg up in industrial and automotive chips, perhaps going to join in on that party. Along the way, as we predicted it would in late 2022 and early 2023, Applied Materials was able to scale back its expenses and capital expenditures. CapEx, of course, being spending on property, plant, and equipment during this revenue growth drought. Free cash flow 
soared as a result. That's why the stock price has climbed because investors love their profits during a bear market. Yes, they certainly do. And Casey, it looks like there's going to be some more pairing back of planned expenses. This is where we get into some of the recent news that was perhaps overlooked in recent months. We'll start with this one. So about this time last year, Applied Materials announced they were going to be building this new research and development center called the Epic Center in the heart of Silicon Valley, where their headquarters are. The Epic Center, Epic standing for Equipment and Process Innovation and Commercialization. This was going to be a big collaboration, research and development collaboration between chip makers, applied materials customers, universities, all sorts of researchers. It was going to be an incremental $4 billion R&D investment for Applied. But two bits of news likely has this thing at least on hold, if not completely canceled. The CHIPS Act program itself said it looks like they're out of the $11 billion allocated to research and development. They're not going to be billing out any cash for construction of these new facilities. And then Shira Stein from the San Francisco Chronicle earlier this week looks like has some inside scoop that perhaps because of this, Applied Materials is indeed delaying or canceling the Epic Center. Oh, well, that's okay. Applied Materials is still likely going to spend their R&D dollars on projects that are already in the pipeline. Chief among these CapEx projects is the continued development of the Centura Sculpta. We covered this last March and how it acts as a way to extend the etch process in the wafer fabrication flow. If you have any questions regarding this, you can definitely see our video on the, this topic and the wafer fab equipment process and chip manufacturing process in a recent video that we'll link here. This could save chip makers a good chunk of money if they're working with ASML's EUV machines. Double and multi-patterning steps to create smaller features can get quite costly. Yeah, that's right. And if you haven't yet read through ASML's description of how these EUV machines work, they have pictures, they have videos. We encourage you to do so. Link here on the video and in the video description. But here's a very high-level briefer on the physics. So one of the challenges with EUV light and the wavelength and the light photon density, uh, think of those as basically like pixels on your digital display, your screen. EUV light's wavelength is just 13.5 nanometers versus the 193 nanometers for deep ultraviolet immersion lithography, kind of the previous generation tech. So in practice, it sounds like this shorter wavelength should make better defined features on a silicon wafer, right? In reality though, and as you can see again from the slide from Applied Materials, is EUV winds up producing higher energy, but fewer light photons. So there are also issues with the reticles and the photo mask used to make the patterns on the EUV light that shines onto the wafer and reacts with the deposited photo resist. Show you the slide from ASML one more time, you can see that EUV light source starting on the right-hand side. It goes through a series of mirrors. It shines through a reticle, through the photo mask, before ultimately getting patterned onto the wafer there on the left where the EUV light terminates. Ultimately, by the time it's all said and done, there are fewer photons able to react with the photoresist on the wafer's surface. So line roughness, again, remember, think of that light and the patterns as pixels uh, on your digital display. If, if you don't have enough pixels, you end up with a really grainy looking image, not wholly dissimilar with what's going on here. Line roughness becomes an issue once the etch process step is complete. Once it strips away the part of the wafer that did not react with the EUV light, and you can see in the little magnifying glasses here, as companies have shrunk down the features on these wafers, you see how rough those lines are getting there on the left. And so Applied Materials has developed these series of machines to help smooth out those lines 
to enhance the performance of the ultimate chips that are cut out of those wafers. Very complex process, super interesting. And Applied Materials has a machine for many of these process steps, as you mentioned, Nick. In addition to that Centura Sculpta, some of their other newer machines include the Producer XP Pioneer CVD machine or chemical vapor deposition machine for patterning film and for higher definition photoresist coverage on the wafer. Another machine, the SIM3Y Magnum etch system, which combines deposition and etch into one chamber to help heal line roughness from EUV machines. And then finally, the Acelta, which was a which came via a acquisition of Acelta Nanographics. That's contour technology for design-based metrology, which enables orders of magnitude more data collection to help ensure design features are properly aligned in subsequent repeat lithography steps. So what does all this mean for shareholders this year, Nick? Well, for one thing, all this new equipment that Applied announced has been in the pipeline for years. Uh, the R&D dollars have already been spent. Now it's a matter of producing the equipment and getting it into its chip maker customers' fabs. But with the Epic Center possibly on hold or getting canceled, this probably was perhaps part of the decision for Applied to dole out a higher dividend. So the company actually increased its dividend another 25% in March, 2024, that compounds the 23% dividend raise the same time a year prior. So the quarterly dividend is now 40 cents per share per quarter or $1.60 per year. Annualized dividend yield currently is at just shy of 0.8% based on a share price of $213 as of April 11th, 2024. Now that may not sound like much, but Remember, Applied's strategic use of funds to execute stock buybacks that we've been talking about the last couple of years, you can see those base level dividend payments in the darker blue on the bottom of this bar chart, but then the stock buybacks are the lighter blue on top. During the bear market, the Applied's management team went absolutely crazy with executing stock buybacks. It makes perfect sense that they did that because here in the neon oval, that's where they were purchasing stock. It's the same for all of us as investors, right? You want to buy high quality stock when it's cheap. When the market has given up on it, has sold it off hard, that's when you want to buy if you're really positive on the long-term potential of the company. That's exactly what Applied's management did. They bought their own stock here during the bear market when the stock was ridiculously cheap. What that ends up doing for us as shareholders is down the line, it means higher earnings per share when growth makes a comeback. So that brings us to today, Casey. Where are we at right now with applied materials? Yes, the current valuation is certainly not as cheap as it was, but bear in mind that this is the start of a new bull market, one that's getting powered by AI, massive demand for computing power, and of course the equipment to make the chips that make it all possible. As you can see from our chart from Main Street Data, this stock has not been cheap, but it's not super expensive either, especially when you take into consideration that we're at the beginning of a new bull market. Let's briefly talk about the balance sheet for applied materials. It's an absolute fortress, thanks again to that free cash flow boom in the last year and a half. 7.5 billion in cash and short term investments. 2.9 billion in long-term investments, debt of 5.5 billion, and cash and investments of 4.9 billion net of debt. In very decent shape. Yeah, I'd say so. Interesting little tidbit here. If you missed it from our wafer fab and chip packaging equipment video, you might be wondering what is that 2.9 billion in long-term investments? Included in that balance is the roughly 14, 15% equity stake that Applied Materials owns in Kusai Electric. It's a chip manufacturing equipment maker in Japan. It was recently brought public, majority owned by KKR, the investment manager. Just an interesting little tidbit here if you're wondering what that long-term investment line item is. But you're absolutely right. 
after dipping into that cash and short-term investment balance for all those share buybacks during the bear market, applied very cash rich again. And it looks like it's poised to do something with that cash balance. It already boosted the dividend. Maybe next it's going to do some more buybacks at some point. Maybe it's just going to continue compiling cash in, in anticipation of that. Maybe there's another tuck-in acquisition that's being planned. We'll have to wait and see. All right, Casey, last step. Let's talk about valuation here based on those uh, price to earnings and price to free cash flow metrics that we showed just a moment ago from our friends at Main Street Data. Again, you can see on a historical basis, PE ratio kind of in the middle and free cash flow, maybe also closer to the middle for applied materials on a historical basis. What do we have as far as a reverse discount cash flow, reverse DCF? to get us to a fair value of $213. That's where we're at right now as of April 11th. Applied has generated trailing 12 month earnings per share of $8.50, earnings per share growth rate of 12% for three years, terminal earnings per share growth rate of 5% thereafter, put in a discount rate of 10%, which gets us to that fair value of $214 per share. Now, again, just to emphasize, this is our estimate this is not an exact science. It's our estimate on what we think the market currently is anticipating from applied materials to get us to that fair value of $214 per share. The job of you as an investor or a potential investor in applied materials is to now decide if that's a reasonable bar for applied to clear. If those expectations that are currently baked into the share price is reasonable or not. Based on applied materials earnings potential over the next, say, five to 10 years, especially the next three years during this next leg of growth for the semiconductor manufacturing industry, we certainly do not think the stock is cheap like it was in 2022 and most of 2023. That said, applied remains a great business that we definitely want to keep as a core position in our portfolio for this bull market. Again, like you mentioned before, Casey, powered by accelerated computing, AI, chip manufacturing, onshoring and friendshoring. So while this isn't a stock that we're currently buying, it's because we already have a full position in the business. We've owned it, again, going on seven, eight years. It's a core part of our portfolio at this point because the business has earned the right to do that. It's grown organically into a roughly 3% position of our portfolio. We're not adding to it, but we're interested to see what management predicts for the balance of 2024. And maybe if they give us some hints on fiscal year 2025, maybe we'd be interested in adding to it again at that point. All right. Happy Flamingo Friday, everyone. I hope you're all ready for a great weekend. Next week, we have a video coming up on one of our picks for 2024 Qualcomm, which is almost back to all time highs. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more if you're on Chipstock Investor. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and have those notifications enabled. Check out our membership here on YouTube or over on our Kofi page, as well as all of our manuals that we have available for purchase. And we'll see you all again soon next week at Chipstock Investor. <laughs>